All right, we are live. I gotta go hot this night. We are live or are we just on, but we are not live exactly. It's similar like we are just on. Cheers, everybody. Going live. Okay, welcome. Uh, person joined us. Three persons, welcome. Welcome, Princess. Welcome, Nick. I saw you going on a trip today. You cut your back. <laughs> oh, you like my tam? All right. Well, the Australians have come back, so I got an Australian hat. And it's quite fine. It's uh, I like it. And since I don't get to go to the hairdresser, which I'm trying to go from yesterday, actually, I'm trying to go from Saturday. I just can't reach. Hmm. Hey, Nick. <laughs> Good night, Comrade Kirk. How are you, my brother? Thank you for joining. Thank you, Nick, for joining. While you join, can you share to somebody? Just share and invite them to come on. While you join, just share to somebody and ask them to come on. It's a rainy night in Kingston. Is it? Well, Princess just live up the road, so it's raining there. Hey, my darling Anika. How are you doing, my baby? Is it raining in um in Trelawney, Anika? Ah, you're not back yet, Nick. It is raining here and it's nice. I almost um I can well, I was considering canceling the live and go roll up curl up somewhere with a book, actually. See if I can start this book that I that I want to get to. But again. That's my onion, my lime with the gin because. Mm. It's raining in St. Mary. Well, it would. Where in St. Mary are you, Kirk? Night, Marie. Boy, it's been raining here since about, mm, about two, maybe, yeah, or about one something. And this one was nanging, nanging in rain. It just. Good night, everyone. I was having a little bit of phone problem. I, I, I think I have about 90% charge and um, hoping that we have a lot of things to get through this month, um, this, tonight. We want to see if we can get through as many of them as possible. So, um, good night, Lisa. I want to rope in the natural on the crew and rope in the northeast St. Elizabeth crew and Ropey in the West, West Westmoreland crew. I, I don't know if I should say Ropey in the West Westmoreland crew because I want the West Westmoreland people, but I also want the the West Anover and the Central Westmoreland that um, that 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 going to be voting in Western Westmoreland. So the rope them in, rope, rope them all in. Natural on the West West Cessa. And um, not East St. Elizabeth. Boy, Kirk, it must be. The rats are out in New York, aren't they? The rats and the roaches, they are up and running. It's for them time of year now. Michelle, can you. Uh, good night, Ivan. How are you, my darling? Good night, good night. Lots of rain in Spanish town. Mm. Yeah, lots of rain. Uh, Say so it's gone. 
So um, let us see if we can start because we have to get through a lot of things. So let us see if we can just get through some of them. The, the topics um, that we announced tonight might be a little bit off because there are so many other things. Hi, Chris. I haven't seen you for the longest while, Chris. What's happening? It's chilling in UK. It would be. But I see Neil Sean without his jacket. So Neil, Ch Neil Sean is this old British guy that I, that I follow on YouTube and we we'll talk about the royals all the time. And he took off him jacket yesterday and said it's kind of warm in, in, in UK. But um, it's good. All right, so we're going to be um, touching on a few things tonight that's not on the the, the, uh, the, the the topic that we advertise. So let me start by just giving you three minutes of the, of the time with um, the raise from the MP. The MPs raise that everybody making a fuss about. So I want to state very clearly and categorically that I support the MPs getting their money. Why do I support the MPs getting a raise? Believe you me, I know how people feel about politicians getting money, but I want to tell you something. Some MPs deserve their money, and I'm going to tell you why. Just using one MP or maybe two. But contrary to popular opinion around the country, members of parliament face on a daily basis things that cost money. Yes, when people say them don't see them MP, they probably don't see him around a water house, or they probably don't see him up at Jews land, but in the somewhere else spending some money for money. And let me tell you something about MPs and money and resources. The 20 million that they get for the CDF, that is not cash that they can put in their pocket and walk up and down with. It's not cash. That is something where somebody can apply for a um, a money to help build up their business and never forgot to SDC and the MP can't go down to SDC or go down to the Ministry of Finance go ask for a million dollars cash to put in their pocket. He can't do it. He or she cannot do it. So therefore, them have that, which, you know, people can access for school fees, help with businesses and, and stuff, other, other stuff. But I don't know how often, for example, Denny's or Natalie has to travel through the toll. And if there are times that they have to, I am sure it costs a lot of money. I look at Lisa Hanna, and I want people to say, all right, Lisa Hanna is probably rich. I'm not saying that she is, but she probably is. But I remember once she was making a point about something, and she said it costs around $40,000 a month to go through that toll to go down to Cessa. I can't imagine what a hilly terrain like what Natalie and Denny's, for example, has to deal with. Um, and some MP are financially independent and they can um, uh, manage themselves. But the truth of the matter is some MP not talking, but some of them actually suffering in terms of how they manage their business, their family, and the constituency. And the public has absolutely no, no sympathy or compassion for members of parliament because they believe that it's a cushy job and they're making a lot of money and they're involved in a lot of things and really blah, blah, but that's not true. Dr. Guy, Dr. Morris Guy, is a country doctor and he has a practice. And when Dr. Guy um, constituents visit him as a doctor, if they bring one $500, he'll take it. If they bring $1,000, he'll take it. Sometimes I have to travel far, go visit a constituent who is sick at a very far place. Very, it's about eight miles from, from um, Port Maria to a place named Bakasud. Maybe even nine, maybe eight, nine miles. It's about 15 miles from Port Maria. Well, not so much. Maybe about 12 miles from Port Maria to go up to Islington. And Dr. Guy visits sick people there and look after them. Now, here's the thing. Dr. Guy would sit in his office and a, a, a constituent would come with a, with a medical issue and him deal with the issue and him write a, a prescription for the constituent. And after him done write the prescription, prescription him after then now go in his pocket and find some money and help that constituent to go fill that prescription. It's not a cushy life for them. 
I mean, I'm not, I'm not defending Mark Golden because in the same rich, and him, him really don't look that rich to me based on him filing, but maybe my hiding money. So I'm not feeling sorry for him, right? I'm not feeling sorry for Andrew Olis. I do Andrew Olis a broke pocket um, man who became um, prime minister. I'm sure I'm not broke anymore because my wife do a lot of all kind of underhanded things for them to make money. But the life of an MP is not easy in terms of finding resources to help their constituents. And so I support their money. Now, I have one teacher in my family, Tiffany. Tiffany is 30. Tiffany teaches at East Selassie High School. And I had to insist when she graduated from Michael that she go down to East Selassie. I insisted. When she was at Michael in the summertime, she volunteered at East Selassie. And then after she graduated, she wanted to teach at this fancy school. And me tell her, so if she got to teach at that fancy school, she probably need to go look somewhere to live. Of course, that was a joke, but Tiffany sometimes take it, um, Tiffany took it um, literal. So Tiffany teaches at A. Selassie. And Tiffany is a hardworking junior teacher. And I remember that during the, during the lockdown, during COVID lockdown, there were mornings when Tiffany opened up the Zoom class and there's just one young fellow on the class. One. We celebrated one day during the lockdown when Tiffany came into the kitchen for some breakfast and Tiffany was on class. And I said, Tiffany, that's all like a whole puppy, the man. Tiffany says four of them. And we celebrated that four kids came on the Zoom class while Tiffany only had one for weeks. Is that one? But four came. And I said to Tiffany, say, um, Tiffany was worried about this particular. There were two students that Tiffany was worried about. And Tiffany was saying that there's this girl, there are these two girls who she believe are, they have potential. They are very good students and they might try and she really, really want to help them. Because the first day that Tiffany went into East Selassie High School, is me carried on that first morning. And on our way down, I said to Tiffany, you don't have to try to kill yourself. There's a reputation that East Selassie has, yes. But you have only one responsibility at all, Tiffany. And that one responsibility is to help one. And as soon as you're done helping that one, help another. So Tiffany is a junior teacher. And Tiffany says she can't find these two young ladies and they're not coming on to the Zoom and she's worried and she wants to know. And I asked Tiffany where they live. And Tiffany tells me, I mean, Tiffany drive, go down there, go look for them. And the internet cut off and one of them phone now work and them don't have nothing and re re blah blah. Now I'm not big up Mr. Wallace. But it's in my text and begging my tablet. And he gave the tablet for that young woman. And the, both of them was on the, on, on, the, on the Zoom. So the life of a teacher, yes, is hard. And I want Sharon Woodstock and Vinita Amaya Wilson not to attack me about this. All right? Resistance leaders. But the truth of the matter is, I have always held this view about teachers. Always held these views, and I'm not speaking about all the teachers, but some. Some teachers go to school and sell cheese chicks and biscuit. Some their school and sell phone card. Some their school and sell all kinds of things instead of educating our children. And I remember during PJ time, or, or, or was pushed at the one time when the teachers them um, I make fun. I we went to a regional management meeting, and I said at the regional management meeting, somebody should meet with the teachers and make a deal with them. And the deal should be, the day you stop graduating Duns Pickney, that's the day you will get whatever you need. You want $600 million for, um, for the year? Start graduating Pickney we can read. Stop promoting Pickney we can read at grade eight to grade nine, and then graduate them. And I'm not saying it's your fault as a teacher. But I'm saying you have a greater responsibility as a teacher in terms of turning out kids that are educated. And you're not doing it. But every damn minute, you want to raise a pay. And every minute you out there with a whole bunch of about the raise a pay. And you have the raise a pay. You get the, 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 the housing, the uniform, the ray, the way. And I know not going to build. I am not insensitive to that. I am saying that teachers, by and large, are somewhat unreasonable because on a graduating dunce, on a graduating dunce, there's no two way about it. 
pick me from grade seven to grade eleven graduate. Oh, I know. There was one, my, I have a nephew, the one we are telling us, eh, the boy did done, say, I forgot to learn to make uh, slippers, say, making the, the, the Bridget imitation slippers, and the boy are making money. But I'm telling you that the boy take me $500 every damn morning and go to school and go down to the, the ball field, down to the corner, Pembrokeal, ball field, that ball is between Pembrokeal and Marvelly, go sit down and smoke ganja the whole damn day, and then come over in the evening and eat my nice, nice dinner, and we iron up him clothes and clean and gone the next day. Until one day them call me and tell me that he's not coming to school. I be telling them I'm going to go back. Plain and simple. But well, after them done tell me everything, I'm going to look at everything. I say, you're not going back. So I've got to find something for you to do. It took a while before we get him into what, um, you know. But I'm saying that, yes, you deserve to be paid as an educator. But my God, man, you're not educating. Most of you are not educating. We have extraordinary teachers like Vinet and extraordinary teachers like Sharon and extraordinary teachers like Lorenzo Ellis and extraordinary teachers like Tiffany. But even those te extraordinary teachers have to admit that their very same colleagues who are bawling bloody murder about their salary not educating our kids. The, 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 the home not doing their part and the school not doing their part. So the home earning $13,000 a, a week for, for minimum wage and the school selling biscuit and phone card and juice and God knows what else. Some teachers are selling, I'll close me here. Instead of educating our children. So one, do not quarrel about what our politicians are paid. Yes, it's, a, it's supposed to be a service that they are doing. And it is a service. All over the world, politicians not only get good pay, but they have systems in place that, I mean, pe people support them. I mean, look at Nancy Pelosi can raise millions of dollars for any candidate because you have a support um, system. There's a system that support them. You can always set up a, 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 a what do you call it, a, what do you call it? Uh, a committee that, uh, and the name slipping me. But then I can always set up various, various bodies. The Democrats have them, the Republicans have them, and those people raise money for them. In our culture, we do not have that system. Our politicians can't call on the, 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 the private sector, whom government always seem to butter up. And yes, the private sector contribute to, to individual parties, but to individual members of parliament, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. And when Dr. Guy collecting $500 from a, from a constituent, to, to do a, 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 a to, to look after them and and spend the time that he normally spend to look after any patient and then punch up that man for going and pack it and find some money towards a prescription that him just right. I think that the guy deserving money. So that's my two cents on that about the whole thing. But teachers demonstrating, and I remember. Back in the day when, when teachers are demonstrate, um, when teachers are demonstrate, teachers call for all kind of things. Does it the, does anybody else find it strange that while teachers are demonstrating, they are not calling for the resignation of the minister of education, or they are not calling for the resignation of the prime minister, or they are not saying that the prime minister should call an election. And Mark Golden took up himself and turn up. I want one of the one of such protests done by the Ministry of um, Education, yeah, or finance, wherever it was, finance. And here he is, turn up, seventeen people. And when him up, when him when him turn up there, according to the resistance leader, down that side who was there. The moment Mark Golden walked there, somebody them see my comment, somebody say, "I where him go? I where him go?" And him there, and him there one side looking like um, brother dog, because him not have no influence, and him not have no presence, and nobody no want to see him, and everybody there they demonstrate, and him there one side looking fool, and looking like a clown, and looking lost. How? How do you explain such things? How do you explain such things that teachers are demonstrating, and them having protests, and the leader of the Rise United Party show up, and nobody not pay him the man, and them one woman do that? Huh? And that is that for that. So I want to leave that alone. Now, I have said my two pence about that. So I think they deserve their money. And I think the teachers, them should, the teachers should 
reevaluate themselves and find out why is it that all the while you're making so much fuss about how much money you should get, but you're graduating dots. And you're graduating the pick they where you can't read nor write. And you're graduating pick they moving them from one grade, pick they who have not excelled in grade eight, but you're graduating to grade nine. Can't read a grade eight book, but you put him in a grade nine. Pass him on to another teacher. Who no pain the mind still, and him still can't read, and then they no move him on to grade 10. I'm not talking about, I don't want more money. If I was government, this is a deal I would be making. We don't know. Stop graduating people who can't read and write, and you will get whatever money you want. Start graduating people who can get up and get into university and get into training institutions, or go start a little business before they even go on to other school. And we need to change some things in the education system. I'm looking forward to people like Vinette and, and Sharon to put forward some changes that will accommodate more learning so that teachers can actually get more money and get more satisfaction. Because the problem with teachers is not so much more money, you know. I think part of the problem is satisfaction. There's no satisfaction um, in them job when teachers used to love them job. When Mrs. Coverley used to, and Miss Marga in a marvelous school used to love them job. I mean, love them job. And nobody can chat to them. No matter what happened, then them feed us and then wash our face and wash our hands and sit down with us and ask us questions. Teachers like that don't exist anymore. And it's and it's sad. It's very sad. Very, very sad. All right, so we get over we're done with that now. So let's talk about um I don't want to get into the topics right now. But whenever we are going to release uh an assessment, a constituency assessment. When well, we started these constituency assessments, um, we took a decision that we're going to release them on a Saturday or a Sunday. And I get a personal satisfaction out of it. I prefer Sunday. Why do I like prefer to release it on a Sunday? It gives me a particular pleasure. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Michelle say I'm sick, but I don't know. But I get a particular pleasure out of releasing on a Sunday. And I get up Sunday morning and I go back to it and I edit it and I proofread it. And I'm smiling to myself because in my mind, I am about to F up somebody Sunday. And that's how I look at it. I'm, I'm, as I get up and I say, well, I'm going to F up Paul well Sunday today. So we have done now a total of 11 constituency assessments, 11. Um, we have done 11 assessments and we have uh, two left. We will not do an assessment of Dr. Phillips' constituency. We already said that. So we have uh, Fitz Jackson and we have Lothian Cousins um, left. And uh, I did an elaborate thing on Paul Well. Now, before we... I want to make it clear that in every assessment that we have done, we have never spoken to any of the members of parliament. I don't, as a matter of fact, I don't chat to none of them. Absolutely none of them I don't chat to. I think if I talk to any of them, them go, it go, my credibility will be questioned. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but I want to guard, safeguard and protect my own credibility. So it's best I don't chat to them. Because there were times and there were days where we're not feeling very happy about how some of you operate. But I still love, I still love you guys. And when I say I love you guys, I want to take out Mark, Angela, Tony Hilton, and and and, and um and to some respect um Julian Robinson. We're not talking about MPs are taking out those four. Coming I mean, not talking to those four, they are a part of the 14.7% rising party. That's that them are not PMP anymore. Them they are rise united party members. So I'm talking about the other 10. So I don't call no MP. I don't engage with no MP, but I'm sure the resistance leaders um, engage with MPs. I am sure many of the leadership in the resistance, the resistance secretary, um, um, I know the resistance leader, Marie, engage with them, resistance leader, Teresa Allen, engage with them, resistance leader, Vinetta Moy, and resistance leader, um, Natalie, Sunny Days, I know, People engage with them, but personally, I don't. I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to talk to them because them, um, they might corrupt my system or corrupt my mind. I do not mean no disrespect to them. I'm just telling them how it is in my head space. I don't want anybody, you know, 
I don't, I don't want to feel funny about when I'm supposed to do something truthfully and honestly. I feel like I owe somebody anything. So I don't engage a conversation with them. Of the level in the level that we have done so far, only two members of parliament called when we, when we sent out their assessment. Two. Two of them called. And they called about general things. They were very nice and courteous and very interested in what we had to say. And they wanted to ask questions and make queries and um, they wanted to, to information as to how we reach where we at with some things and um, some areas that them think that where we were and they, they wanted all of that. And we accommodated that. Only two of them called. Um, I wasn't thrilled, but they needed information and they felt that they acted responsibly I think that the two that called were responsible members of parliament who figured that here are some things that you guys said. So I am interested to know how you arrive at this. I'm interested to know about that. And I'm interested to know about that and that and that and that. And we were happy to, to, to depart that information, impart that information with them. And um, yeah, so that is that. When we are analyzing the, the information that we have, when we're doing that analysis and the assessment, we don't talk to them about it. We don't ask them any question about it. When I go into a constituency, which is where I stop Carrie Richard and by and I'm, I'm princess. But just for this, when I, when I go into a constituency, the only way you know I'm there is that this, I want you to know I'm there. That's the only way you know that I'm there. And Paul Burke and um, Dr. Phillips and Maxine and Wilson and Maureen Webber and them can tell you. That's how I operate. As general secretary, them can call me and say, go check this out for me. And if I want you, some people know that I'm there, some people will know. If I do want to know, you'll never know. But I've been doing this a long time. And we never call him. We never said anything to any of them. We don't engage them in what we're doing. We're not involving them in what we're doing because it's an objective assessment and analysis of your stewardship of a constituency. In analyzing and assessing your stewardship of the constituency, it is imperative to analyze this, you, you personally, your contribution to, a, to the PMP, your, your coming to PMP, your, you know, your standing in the PMP, what you did, what you did not do. It's imperative. Why is it imperative? It's imperative because you are the member of parliament and member of parliament wields a lot of power. What is the power that members of parliament um, wield? Members of parliament love to say it's my constituency. And my constituency and my constituency and my constituency. I, I am always weary about that. I like to think that is a PMP constituency if you're a member of parliament for the PMP. You know, who in the constituency? Can we, people can vote you. Yeah, but them say that. However, what we do to come to some of those conclusions in the analysis, um, it is live. What is it? What is that, Michelle? What we do to come to some of those conclusions is this. Of the 11 constituencies that we have analyzed and assessed so far, the only constituency that I have not spoken to somebody close to the MP or somebody involved in the political organization of the constituency is Julian Robinson constituency, which is the first one we did, Southeast St. Andrew. And when I did Julian analysis, I did not speak to a soul down there. Nobody. I just did the analysis purely based on the information that I have and purely based on the, on the um, data that was available to me. That's what I did, which is why the resistance leadership is of the opinion that we should do an advanced analysis of Julian's constituency now that we have had an opportunity to talk to people who, who are involved in the operation down there. But for every constituency, I speak to people who are involved in the operation and the day-to-day -day running and close to the MP to get insight. And speaking to them is not to ask them to provide me with information. 
Speaking to them is to put things to them and ask them to verify, rebut, um, explain, anything that they need to do. So I could call somebody and I say to them, I call, I, I spoke to a number of people in East Kingston and, um, and Port Royal, but none of them, well, I spoke to people. And I asked an ordinary person, just an ordinary person who votes uh, PMP. I said to them, Paul, we'll never get a hope of vote this time. We you think cause that? And she went off in all kind of something, which most of it were personal as to why she didn't, why she think Paul didn't get all that vote. But I made contact with two persons that are very close to Comrade Paulwell. Two persons. The first person I sent a text. And the response from, I sent a text, I said, can I, I'd love to talk to you. Can, can I talk to you, uh, a phone conversation? And the text came back saying, for what? Or what for? And just reading it, you, you feel the animosity. You, you feel it coming through the text. And I said, oops. And I text back and I said, boy, it looks like you're upset about something or you are very, uh, you know, you, you're coming across as with a, with a whole of angst. So therefore, make it rest. Mm, that's what I said. I reached out to a second person who's close to Comet Powell and very involved in the political organization of East Kingston and Port Royal. And that person, when I put certain things to the person, went off on a whole dandy shandy ups catch baseball um all kind of things confusion and the one thing you could get i could get get out of that person was that person keep putting everything everything that i that i brought up the person keeps saying incumbency it's because all of that is because of incumbency we spoke and i timed it for almost an hour 58 minutes and some seconds we spoke and at the end of that conversation, I gleaned absolutely nothing from the person. Nothing. Because the person couldn't hold an objective conversation. The person couldn't say, listen, my member of parliament, him too soft. My member of parliament, him not listen. You know, some people say that? Not this one. Mm -mm. You know? Him, um, him this and him that and looking for excuses for Philip Orwell. So therefore, having failed at that, I had just but one um, way to go now, and that is to talk to the people themselves. And the people themselves in most places are not pro Paulwell. Now, I get some calls. I get a particular call from a gentleman that I love dearly. I respect his opinion very, very much. I wouldn't want to do anything to upset him. Um, that's what that's what happened to you when you love somebody, you know. And he's concerned about how how how, um, how caustic the analysis assessment of Paul Well was. And um, I explain everything to him. Him kind of understand. So I want to I want to explain that to you to say this. All the members of parliament must learn and appreciate the work that I put in. And I'm saying I know. The work that I put in to get that analysis and assessment. They must also appreciate the work that the rest of the leaders of the resistance put in to ensure that we have accurate information. Accurate information. The resistance leaders... From the beginning of this thing, from the beginning of their decision to do these assessments, we came to a decision that everything will be accurate and truthful. And if as a member of parliament, you can't see it as something to help you, then clearly you cannot be helped. Because if this is going to cause you a lot of problems just to hear the truth, to tear the band-aid off, and to expose the thing as it is, and you cannot see that it is aimed at helping you, then I can't help you. And the analysis is to help the authentic PMP members of parliament. 
That is what the analysis is for and the assessment. I have a little fun with it. Like when I discover that Denny's middle name is Joyce and I truly like the name Joyce and Anthony Hilton, you know, name after King George. <laughs> George. So I mean, we have, I, have, I personally have a little fun with it. I look for fun to have with it. But I can't do nothing unless I'm having fun. If I'm not having fun, it's not worth doing. It is to help you. The analysis and the assessment is to help you. Those two members of parliament that called, they realize that. But I tell you something else. When we did you, Graham's analysis, I ended the analysis by telling you, Graham, say, must go find a, um, a football analysis for that. I was making fun of him because he did the football analysis thing. The next day, or two days after, the resistant leader in Northwest St. Catherine sent us some pictures of you, Graham, walking and talking to residents out in the field. The resistance leader in Northwest St. Catherine sent us photographs. So you, Graham, yeah? you know for when we don't see him come down there, sir? You know for when we don't see him around there, sir? Now we don't go up on social media and make no noise about that. We ask, we ask everybody not to do that. We agree that nobody that will go out there and say, you, Graham, we see you walk, no, you walk, no, and make no fun of him. No, that is not our intent. Our intention is to help him. I don't think you, Graham, can be helped in terms of winning. But if you, but at least him start to do something. Him recognize what we were saying, and him went out. Him went out, and that's a good thing. Now, Comrade Paulwell must understand that the bet it's better if people have the whole truth of East Kingston and Port Royal in order for you to be able to move forward, Comrade Paul. I'm saying that Comrade Paul and his friends. So let me just reiterate some things. Paul Burke, Paul Christopher Burke and his wife Angela Brown Burke has been the most destructive duo in East Kingston and Port Royal. Everything that I said in that analysis needed to be said. It had to be said. And it is said with an intention. An intention. Same like the, the court of law. What was your intent? Our intention is to help Philip Paulus as an authentic PNP. Not to beat him down, not to crucify him. And we love P Philip Paulus. I love Philip Paulus. I will always love Philip Paulus. I'm falling out of love with Julian Robinson because I'm deep, deep in rise now. But I mean, when we did it, we did it to help him and the country and the PNP people in East Kingston, Port Royal, must know that these are the things that, that's happening in East, East Kingston, Port Royal, because they themselves will need to help. East Kingston, Port Royal is a CFPMP seat. But how long, for how long, the GLP will hold on to 1,400 votes for basically every election or, or less? So what happened? The next election, we're going to get 2,005 and them get 12 or 1,300 or something like that if people are showing up to vote? People need to know. And if I was Comrade Powell and his team, I would take that analysis and go through it with a fine tooth comb and fix some things. Paul Christopher Burke, I had to explain to my very good friend whom I love very dearly this morning. I said to him, said, did you know that Paul Burke is responsible for the Norman Gardens Division electoral matters? And when Paul Burke is in charge, when they say Paul Burke is in charge of electoral matters, don't take that as being electoral matters. It means he's in charge of every damn thing. It means that the councillor not doing nothing except go to council and get our money and them rub up the money and whatever it is them do. And very few, very little resources going through the division. That's what it means. It don't mean anything else. Paul Burke is in charge of one of Philip Paulwell's division. And... I had to come on tonight and address the fact that some of them people them vex. Because them themselves must understand that if you don't love him and you don't want him to continue to succeed, then you must face these truths. Paul Christopher Burke is the person responsible for electoral matters in the Norman Gardens division. That's Angela Brownberg's former division. And Angela Brownberg, I would imagine, 
based on her history in, in, in Norman Gardens, would still have a little bit of influence in Norman Gardens. And in addition, the sitting councillor was her um, protege, something else and protege, but whatever. So they know what they're doing. Why is Paul Burke in charge of anything at all in East Kingston and Port Royal? He must have a group there. He must have a business there. He burn and grow down there. But because he has been so destructive and undermining Philip Powell all of his 25 years there, Paul and Angela Bromberg has served to do nothing but undermine Philip Powell and his efforts. And Philip Powell is sitting there with Paul Burke running one end division. How is he going to fix those problems if you have Paul Burke running around in one end division? Don't you see the danger in that? Don't anybody see the danger in that? Huh? Anything Paul Burke in charge of, it must fall apart. And, the, and, and, and whatever it is him doing there is not to enhance or help Philip Paul well. It's not. And Philip must understand that this is the reality. And everything that we're saying in his analysis is the God's truth. And he must deal with it. Take it on frontal and wrap your head around it and just deal with it. And go build back your constituency and show some of them people there and go deal with your people them. And one final thing on the Philip Paulwell thing. Most members of parliament involved in round robins in them constituency. Certainly Patrick Roberts, he mean about five or six round robins in the, the, the constituency. Maybe not all the round robins in the constituency, I don't know. Because he mean not every damn round robin, he mean not everything like a big girl. He mean not everything. So, when we check the other constituencies that we did their analysis and, and assessment in, most of those MPs are also involved in round robin. I don't mean that those of them join them, but we find round robin people say, MP, come by, buy something, support the bar, know about the round robin. And we find people who say, sometimes I beg the MP, I'm money to make my round, my round robin, and the MP get me. So the rock, the the MP involved in a round robin. I couldn't find one round robin that could say that about Philip Powell. Even Angela Brown Burke, I mean, she's involved in a round robin, but to find people who say she came by or she gave her money to pay them round robin and all of that, all that. But I mean, I know. So I'm saying to the leaders of East Kingston and Port Royal, what we are doing out here with these assessments is to help you. It's not to embarrass you. It's not to make you feel bad. And do remember, the Paul Well thing was a long, long thing. And when I spoke about how much we like him, how much we love him, how much he was one of the best ministers, how what he did while he was minister. I mean, him get a lot of big up. But we have to be level. We have to be fair. We have to be truthful. And we have to put out the facts. We cannot square facts. You have to... Just put it there. It's facts and you just can't get around it. It's stubborn and it, it's just there. And I personally don't know how else to operate outside of the facts. I mean, the facts are there. But if my intention is to help you, then I've got to tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. And that's all there is to that. When Bill Clinton was um, president, and there was this big thing about allowing gay people in the military and gay people in the military and Ray. Bill Clinton was pushing back at his advisors, telling them that he don't want to go out there, go, go talk about this don't ask, don't tell. He thought, Bill Clinton thought it was demeaning to gay people. Bill Clinton thought that it was a bad thing to say about gay people because gay people are people. Gay people make the best soldiers. Gay people are the best writers, performers, artists. And Clinton was making that case to his advisors. He said, not going out to talk about no, don't ask, don't tell. And they sat him down and they said to him, yes, people share the life. They said to him, gay people are getting killed in the army. Gay people are getting killed in the armed forces. Gay people are being um, terrorized in the armed forces. And we can't seem to come up with nothing else right now. But if we do that, 
we could explain to the gay community that this is just a short-term stopgap for you to stop getting killed and terrorized in the armed forces. And he did it. He did it. Because it was the best. They didn't even want you the truth, but they had to tell him. So I'm saying, I got the truth. We're coming to see, we're going down to Lothian Cousins soon. And um, we're going we to do fits and um, we're going to finish it up. And when we are finished, this last two, we will then begin to look at the PMP constituencies that were lost. And at the end of that, we're going to do a, a revisit um, Southeast, St. Andrew and, um, and Julian Robinson. So that's that for the Paulwell, the analysis thing. Let's move it on, move it on, people. I saw Lisa Hanna at um, at a conference, a divisional conference for an authentic PM. It's an authentic PMP conference, and I am hoping, and I hope that I'm not the only one hoping that Lisa will continue to go to only authentic. PNP conferences. We are encouraging both the well, DMN say not the none, but I suspect some authentic PMP are going to pull him out and ask him to come. Only authentic conferences. So let me remind Lisa and remind Damien before I tell you some things where Lisa say, I'm going to set Lisa straight. <laughs> but some things. Let me remind you. Know. Mark is not the leader of the People's National Party. Mark Golden is not the leader of the People's National Party. Mark Golden is the leader of Rise United Party, which makes up 14.7% of the People's National Party. That's it. That 14.7% is him, Angela, Tony Hilton, um, Julian Robinson and some little ticky ticky losers and all the other losers them. That's it. That's it. The other eighty five point three percent of the People's National Party don't have no leader. The other eighty five point three percent of the People's National Party not supporting Mark Golden and the Rise United. They are not in there. Mark has fourteen point seven percent. So yes, Lisa. You go to the conference and you talk about the socialist and the compassionate capitalist and you say that you're talking about workers training. That one is the one that got me. That workers training thing. So Lisa, in order to have workers training, you have to first have workers. And Rise United don't have any workers. Rise United only have themselves. Bunting Mark. Angela, Julian, um, uh, what next one? Tony Hilton and Parchment and Dayton and uh, uh, them that fourteen point seven percent. Hmm. The other eighty five point three percent. You know what them I do? Them I listen to we, and we them I listen to. We not lead nobody because we can't lead nobody. We can't. We can't even lead the damn dog in my yard. I'm certainly can't lead my grandson. But a we them a, a we them I listen to. Them listening to the resistance, them watching, them following. You know how we know that? Let me tell you how we know that. Here's how we know that. We know that when I wake up at quarter to six and jump in my car and go pick up my community person who go up, you go keep my appointment at KPH. I may have to leave out early because I have to clear off a tree by 6.30. Because if I don't clear off a tree by 6.30, we're going to get stuck in traffic. And I go pick him up and pick up him sister, carry him down for him appointment. And you're going to KPH and there's no parking, but the security them allow you to park when you tell them that you have somebody in the car who needs a wheelchair. I'm a park up. I'm a come out of the car. And I said to the security, I need a wheelchair. And I'm looking for a, a porter or somebody. And across the road from where I park is a long line of Jamaicans waiting to go into that building where the eye clinic is. I figure I would put a thing in that building because that line is always damn long. And by the time I come out of the car and looking for a porter, the people in the line, one or two persons might say, I, I see a Miss Karen, a Karen Cross. 
I, I, I knew somebody say, I see the, I see the pan, I see the pan, um, Facebook. I yes, other person said, oh yeah, yeah, beat, but I see a beat a massa mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, them say so. And I get that the first day, the first man I carried on that gentleman. I get that. And then I couldn't get a wheelchair. And then I saw a porter, and his name is Dakers. He work at Dennis Company. Very fine man. Everybody in the hospital I call out Dakers, 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 because apparently him help, him very helpful and him very charming and nice to people. So people want to talk to him and want him help them. And him go get and him go and get the um the the wheelchair for me. And while Dakers go and get the wheelchair. I go across the road and say hello to the people because once I start that conversation, it's going to be rude to go without going over there and say something to them. So I go over there and I say, good morning. How are you doing? And Ray Ray. One person come from Maypen, one person come from Westmoreland, one person come from down the south, one person come from over there. So, and then they line and they might talk. And some pre people will say, well, we like where you talk, we like where you do. And some people will say, yeah, man, appear things are going in this, man. And, and some people will say, me not vote. The one who said, me not vote, clear labor right. Clear labor right. And her participation in this question is that she not vote. So she not have nothing necessary because you know she's a labor right. And then, and then, and then putting them two pens in it. And the first time I did it, I realized that I can't do it again and have money because I end up with leave 1500 with them to buy some juice and thing. <laughs> and them big you up and them say things. I'm say a lot of things. It swell up my head. So many things swell up my head. So I'm not repeat them. Going to the pharmacy and in my prescription, sat on that, the chairs that they have there in the Leeds pharmacy and waiting for my prescription. And the damn loudmouth man come on the window and say, Karen Cross, and the entire pharmacy head and ears and eyes prick up. Immediately, everybody prick up. Mm. Sometimes it's embarrassing. I pick up my prescription and it never feel not one time without one person saying something to you first. I me, me watch you, know, yes, maybe keep it up, baby, but be careful, you know. Mm. It's a senior citizen. Now, next senior citizen, touch your hand. She obviously like the excitement and stuff. And then you go through and you go pee and you're going through and everybody engaging, everybody talking about something. That's how I know that the 85%, the 85.3% are listening to we. And we them are listening to not Uno. They don't want to hear nothing from you now. You know, can't lead them. And then, and then, you're going to the valuation office to get my car evaluated. The four hours sit down in there. People watching TV, people in them phone. I don't care my phone go into those places because I like conversation. So I'm not in the phone, I just sit down. The poor young lady, Karen Cross, Everybody come out of them phone and come out of them TV. And a conversation starts. And it's never anything negative. It's encouraging and uplifting. And it tells you where Jamaicans are. And I have to ask questions. I like it sometimes, most times, because I get to ask questions. I get to get phone numbers. I get to get an idea where they're coming from. I get stories. Yeah? Walk outside when them call the next. Me call, talk to the gentleman and them call for him name to go get his car done. Up some me and him get for walk outside and go around the back where them evaluating his car. I would talk some more and him share some things with me. That's how I know them listening to us. That's how I know. That's how we know. Many many leaders in the resistance can give you similar stories about that. Pri um, princess on Sunday. Princess went to Calabash. And Princess went to Calabash and met a comrade who came in from New York to Calabash. And Princess started a conversation with the comrade and basically did an interview. Asked her permission to tape her and she said yes. And she talked and she talked and she talked and she tell us why she talked some things. 
princess met the comrade. But when I hear the when I heard the voice and the name, I knew the comrade. The comrade is from the Greenwich farm. And she migrated to the US some years ago. But she come from the US Greenwich farm. Her name still up on the voters list. And she's very despondent about what's happening in the People's National Party. And Princess make sure tell her that Mark Golden doesn't lead the PMP. He's leading Rise United. And I'm going to tell you how that way to work when time come. I'm going to talk about when time come. When time come. So Lisa, them can't have no workers training. Because them not have no workers. No PMP workers now work with them. 85.3% of the PMP workers them that. Them are not with them. Them now work for them. The PMP workers are PMP. Them now work for the Rise United. And that is why them now no workers training. Because them now no workers. Only authentic PMP can go find them workers. Lisa. Like you. And Fitz. And Natalie. Yeah, and Denise, Joyce, the, the other men. <laughs> Only these people can find them workers. Them can't find them. Mark Golden will never find one worker. The workers down the South St. Andrew are authentic PMP workers. They will show up for the PMP in spite of him. But him can't find the workers nowhere else. Can't guarantee him that. Same so can't find the workers nowhere else. There's something else that Lisa said over the weekend, and I really want to... To, to talk about it. Um, champion socialist. I like when she used those words, you see. I like how she coined her words to make them um, to stand out. Champion socialist. Champion socialist. You know what that tells me? That tells me that Lisa Hannah understands that the People's National Party is a democratic socialist organization and Rise United is not. And that's why Mark Golden is not leading 85.3% of the People's National Party, champion socialist party. Then you can't lead it. So that is that. We encourage Lisa Hannah and Damian Crawford and Mikhail Phillips, because him kind of redeem himself away, to go out and talk to the authentic PMP people. But you know, watch on yourself. Watch on yourself and watch on the language, you know. To you know, go to a conference, go tell the PMP people them out, they must come out, come vote for Mark Golden. Or start telling the PMP, PMP people them nothing about leader Mark Golden. Uh uh. When you go talk to the PMP people about building back them constituents and them division. Because Mark Golden does not lead the PMP. 85.3% of the People's National Party does not support Mark Golden. He is not our leader. We over here, sir. We depend that with him and them. Huh? Let us hope that Lisa and Damien go on out go do them thing. So let's look at the, the, uh, the promotion that we did. Talk about what we're going to talk about. Let's talk about Naughty St. Elizabeth a little bit. Because we haven't delved into Naughty St. Elizabeth um, um, in any large way. The delegates of North East St. Elizabeth have full understanding of what they need to do. Nobody now to tell them, nobody now to hype them up. Dorothy McCannon calling delegates to tell them to vote for current Spencer. Dorothy, I think you're Danny Buck wife, you know. Trust me. I love Danny Buck too much to disrespect you. You need to sit down. Now you have to sit down and stop calling the PMP delegates them. I leave the PMP delegates them alone. Because the PMP delegates of South East St. Anne already show their power. And show that are them in charge of them own destiny. And show that are them are Norman Manly delegates. The delegates and people of South East St. Catherine did the same. And delegates all over the country is going to show you know, that them in charge of them destiny. And them understand them duty and them responsibility and them power to them constituency, to them um, to them family, to them community, not to mark goal in. So that we can leave the delegates of Northeast Centers alone. Make them alone. Go make them decision. 
as to who them want to represent them. Because you cannot. How can a big woman like him call him PAP delegates to tell them to support a criminal, Kern Spencer? And let me explain something about Kern Spencer because I don't hate Kern Spencer. Kern Spencer was involved in something bad. When people are involved in something bad and then redeem themselves, you forgive them. You move on. You let them forget it too. You let them be forgiven too. You know, rub it on them face. You know, lick them down with it every opportunity you get. It's not a good thing. But here it is. The way current Spencer is easing himself back into the politics, into our psyche, is what is hurting him, not what he did. What he did, if he had gone to trial and been found not guilty, Nobody could chat to him today. He would have a right to go compete, to go see how things working out and ask the people to support him again. He would have that right. But it never ended with a not guilty verdict. It never went to trial. And during the time that he got off of that and it never went to trial, he spent his days undermining the last two members of parliament disrupting the constituency of the last two members of parliament, spreading bad, bad vibes and planting bad seed in the constituency that contributed to us losing it. Contributed greatly because of what he did undermining the constituency with the last two members of parliament. And with that, there is the added bonus of current Spencer coming back into the poly politics and the prompting and promotion and financing of Peter Bunting, who is still leading everything in the Rise United movement, still leading everything, still directing the orchestra, Angela take her instructions from him, everybody take instructions from him, and him is the one who wants Kurt Spencer, because him can handle Kurt Spencer, him and Mark and Angela will be able to handle Kurt Spencer because we're well, them corrupt and them just need some of corrupt people to help them be more corrupt. So Kern could have had a better re-entrance into the politics. If one, him never undermined him last two members of parliament. And two, if him never knock head with Peter Mercat Bunting, who helped him corrupt the system, and, and, and that's the thing with politics because he's going to be in a position now where if he don't get it, he might undermine it and try to destroy it. And that is how they operate when they don't get what they want. And Dorothy, go sit down, man. Go sit your ass down and leave the PMP delegates them in North East St. Elizabeth alone. PMP delegates in North East St. Elizabeth is your decision. You need a fresh start. He did a brand new start from that. You know? Mm. Push that somewhere. Yeah. And start new with something else. Not him. Not him. He must have a good look for the PMP. I'm going to call up the Naughty St. Elizabeth delegates him for me. He must have a good look for the PMP. The PMP needs stars. And he must not a star. Because the PMP is going to be a a big show business thing when we when we run a mark goalin and we are running mark goalin and him is not a star him is a, a falling star he was a star one time and him and philip paul used to run the dancing scene on the stage and all of that but ah he's not a star anymore he's a falling star you don't need him you don't need him and once again let me remind the delegates of northeast saint elizabeth that this power that you have is not only a power but it's a responsibility. It's a duty that you have been given by Norman Manley and you must exercise it with caution. You must exercise it in the best interest of your family and your community. You must exercise it based on who are going to bring out your votes. So you have to look at the people who you are going to vote for and say to yourself, I work PD 66. I have 344 voters in PD 66. Which one of them people are going to help me bring out PD44, PD66? Which one of them? That is what you have to do. 
as a delegate. You don't just go, get up willy nilly and because and take their money, you know. Take every cent that current Spencer gave from bunting money. I'm gonna take it. Every cent. But you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything that they want you to do. And that's a new power you must also discover. Because when them come with their money, you must understand that it's money that is due to you. It is money that you're supposed to get. And then come, come take it, come. It's like gambling. You never win yet. The house always win. So them come with their money, they might pay for a vote. When you should have get paid for vote from 20 years ago. So every cent when them come with, take it, collect. It's when the when, when teacher them call it retroactive money. It's retroactive money for the 20 years ago where you have vote. So every cent when them come with, you take it. But you, as a delegate for North East St. Elizabeth, must think about how you going to deliver the PMP votes for the People's National Party on election day. You must think as to how you going to go into your community, your PD, and how you going to talk to your voters and get them to come out for the PMP. You must think who going to help you to do that. It's not going to be Mark Golin. It's not going to be Peter Bunting. And it's certainly, God forbid, not going to be Kern Spencer. Push him through the door. Fling the door behind him, make it lick him. When he might go through, don't hurt him, but make it lick him. And send him on his merry way. Don't entertain an argument with him. Let us move right over into South East St. Anne once more again. Because I want to Aunt Mark Golden to understand that everything that the resistance do, every member of the resistance out there talking, when Vinet and Sharon, as the two only teachers me know in the resistance, <laughs> if there are any more, I oh, and Ruth Bailey. Oh, Jesus, how could I? When those teachers talk on social media, other teachers listen, other teachers follow. Hmm. When the policemen and the soldiers and the, and the, and the, and the um, ancillary workers and the nurses and the resistance talk, the other people out of road listen and follow. Them not follow Uno. Mm -mm -mm. Them not follow we. Them not listen to we. We. Them not listen to not Uno. So I'm saying to South East St. Anne. I don't hear nothing about Patricia Duncan on Sutherland. Look like she decides, say. Eh? She spend enough money. I'm so glad the South East sent and people them near out she. Get them 20,000, them 30,000 near about the boops. Yee! <laughs> One of us take a, a page from out a South East sent and book. She go in there with her money and them take it. Follow. Delegates who not follow, that's how this thing work. Then, them do a bogus poll that Gave the cricketer a bogus 49% because he may walk up and down with the teeth in ugly counselors them. Where you say Adika? <laughs> and that turned out to be bogus. And the PMP delegates in South East sent and get up and show them who's boss. So after that, um, them do an next poll and everybody meet the 25% threshold, a threshold which the Rise United leader cannot meet, but the PMP um, candidate, Mr. Russell, met that, and the other two Rise candidates, Cricketer and Patricia, apparently make it too. I want to bad some, I want to stop my man show. So, there's going to be a, a selection, and I'm talking to the South East and delegates. A resistance leader buck up Mr. Russell somewhere in Kingston and said to Mr. Russell, So are you going um, to win the delegate vote down there? So Mr. Russell's response to the resistance leader was, Why well, I don't know, you know, because everywhere I walk, go, the people them says, Lisa, them what? So I don't know how this is going to work out. And I agree with them. That is Lisa them want and is Lisa them just should get. 
I like Mr. Russell and I like his spirit. Authentic PMP that is. And he has done a lot of things in his constituency. So I like him, but I don't know him. Really don't, but I like him. I have so many voice notes and videos of wavy lines walking up and down in South East St. Anne with ugly teeth in Lydia and ugly teeth in Garrick and ugly teeth in Bell and the next ugly one in name wear. I don't see the pussy feelings, man, much. And maybe I'm in hiding, but you don't trust them. Because when you have war with them, you don't trust them. You don't ease up. But I see where bad was he walking up and down with them anymore. I wonder what going on so. But I'm speaking to the South East End and delegates them. When they go into that room that day to nominate candidates to represent you know, in the next election, let me enlighten you know, on some things because them can't take on the rights anymore because I don't know them now. Them can't stop you from nominating anybody you want to nominate. Nobody can stop you. You can nominate anybody you want. If you see one big bulldog and him have an orange t-shirt and him orange PMP band and him a blue and Vevezula, and you think that him would be a good MP, you can nominate him. Don't worry tell you nothing. You can nominate any damn body you want. Don't have to be the three or the four. You can nominate anybody you want. Which means that you should go into that room and nominate Lisa Anna to be your next member of parliament. And don't take no from her. Go in there and nominate her. And them can't stop you from nominating anybody. And them can't stop you from nominating her. You are a recognized constituency. That Mark Golding was trying a thing with. I want to shut him down. I can't nominate anybody on the want. Anybody. So don't let them tell you nothing. All right? Because if we say the pussy feelings, man, and if we say Garrick, we should organize some man for draw down Garrick pants. Can my pants open a tear up brief? I want to open a tear. I'm <laughs> not play. I'm not play with you. All right? On a drag, get, a, get some woman for draw down Garrick pants and exp expose him, tear up brief them. Can't look like friend him, friend him lose a cow setting in my buying a brief. But anyway, you know, <laughs> some man for draw down him pants. <laughs> so, delegates from South East St. Anne, don't be afraid. Go into that station or room, wherever it is, and go nominate on the MP. And tell us on the not take no for an answer. Because Jamaica needs Lisa Hanna. Jamaica needs Lisa Hanna. Jamaica needs Damian Crawford. Jamaica needs Raymond Price. Jamaica need these people. Jamaica need these people. So they can't go in there and nominate. Anybody who want to nominate, and I'm encouraging you to go nominate on the MP. And don't take no crap from nobody. Don't make nobody from the PAP secretary come there and come tell you nothing. Don't afraid for war them, and I don't mean that you should start no fight. Don't lick down nobody, don't chop nobody, because I know no dog a South Sea they sent and uno love uno machine. Because a lot of uno still a look for Lydia for chop her up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so don't take a chat from them. Anybody from Secretary come down there, eh? come tell them say uno can nominate nobody. Don't take no chat from them. The PNP Constitution guarantee you know, all that right. Them can't take it from you. Know. And at that time, you know, they can't war with them. And um, at that time, I don't care what the war looks like. If you know, war with them, for them to come tell you know, what to do. So, Cesar, big up on yourself. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to get back with, with Queen, Her Majesty, our Queen. Let's move on over to Western Westmoreland. And rolling in Ian Ears crew for me up. Call up Ian Ears to me and him, him look a crew from the Western Westmoreland. I want to talk to the Western Westmoreland people. Or maybe it's not so much Western Westmoreland, but mostly Ian Ears 60 groups that we have, we farm up. Where all the people them come from Western Hanover and um, Central Westmoreland. 
Now, I want to talk to them people there, in a them group there that Ian is farm up from, from Western Hanover and Central Westmoreland. We don't have quarrel with Uno. We don't know war with Uno. All right? And Ian is calling up and him offer all the money I want to go over Western Westmoreland, go change your address. I want to come from Central Westmoreland and Western Hanover. I want to go over there, go, go, go poor so I want to live somewhere else and transfer on the vote to Western Westmoreland where I don't live. Now, I will repeat that. Ian Hills encourage you to commit a crime. It is a crime. You could go to jail, you could, you could lose your vote for that crime. On a live in Western Hanover, on a live in Central Westmoreland, and Ian Hills pay on the money and bust on into Western Westmoreland for Uno to transfer on a vote to come vote for him. It is a crime. And we have someone in the we have someone in the name. Okay, I report to the electoral office and we we'll lose on a vote. Cause we know to live in Western Hanover. I we know to live in Central Westmoreland. We know we want to live. When you think it's a joke thing we are run, we don't run joke thing. A war we are run. And when you are run war, you have to know everything. You can't take nothing for granted. That can we not have a POW camp. So we don't take prisoners. So we know everything. So here we are, you know. We are not frightened, you know. We are not war, you know. Because we know how it go. And things tough. And time hard. And all kinds of things. So we need no words, you know. But here we are set to you know. Uno 60 groups where Ian is farm up. All of them. And from 10 on a year, I know so we're going to tell the rest of them. What I did was illegal. But Ian is putting it up to it. And it's really a criminal already. Because he's already an established criminal. He put up other people to do criminal things. So Uno always can go to court and tell the judge, say, him telling the sound of a it, I only never know. Just like the man, then we go march down on Washington, go into the court and tell the judge, say, Trump tell them, Uno can do that too. But I'll be saying, I'll war with you. Here we are, set Uno. We know it go. So Ian Hills, I'm going to move out of West, Western Hanover. And I'm going to move out to Central Westmoreland and can go register you know, in a Western Westmoreland. And I'm going to put down one side for when the selection comes, and we're going to turn up and give him the vote, and I'm going to turn um, candidate for Western Westmoreland. Now, we don't have an issue with that. I will not report to No, no, no. That's just a joke. We know about we not report to None of that. We have a higher duty, I higher calling and a bigger duty to perform because we are PMP. So we can explain what our duty and responsibility is because Ian Hills is going do all of that. The first thing we must understand is that in this country, the minimum wage for work is now $13,000 a week. The minimum wage for work is $13,000 per week. So all I want to do that Ian is make a change on address for a vote for him and commit crime, we don't need to start telling him we don't need a pay bill every fortnight. That's $26,000 for each of them every fortnight. He may have piss back load of money. The whole of them have money, all of the rise leaders them. Ian and the whole of them, they have money. So we must go to him and we must tell him that here it is. It's a crime we we'll commit, you know. When you tell us that we must go transfer our vote to Western Westmoreland, I will still live in a Western Hanover. I will still live in a Central Westmoreland. And you tell us to come transfer our vote to Western Westmoreland to give you. And you pay for the transport. And you give you $10,000 a piece. And all the rest of it. We're going to require some more, a whole lot more payment. On the forward of the life to the Western Westmoreland people, they make them send them out to the bogus delegates. <laughs> Comrades, this is a serious matter. I want you to understand me. The delegates them, that Ian Hills, bogus delegates them. I don't know bogus delegate, but the feeling we that me are calling you that. We don't carry no bad feelings soon. We don't have all the bad vibes soon. We are big enough. What we want, what we want you know, to understand, we don't have a greater responsibility. Ian Hills is a member of the Rice Party. We don't have a member of the PMP. We don't have PMP, he's a 
never rise united. Uno no owe him no obligation. Uno no have to do nothing for him. Because him and a PMP, him an ex labor right criminal and rise united. So don't have to do nothing for him. For the greater responsibility is to collect money from them for every single thing that him asks on the do. Make sure you collect money because my rise united. Him is not an authentic PMP because you can't collect money from authentic PMP for doing nothing. But him, you need to collect money, man. At least the minimum wage. At least the minimum wage. Don't make Ian ears have to sit on one side. And when him come and run some little things and you know, keep the motor keyed and drinking session and all kind of foolishness. Oh no. Don't engage him in that. Got that. Got that. But all about the Benjamins. Uh, uh, and the Benjamins we have. But we're, all about the manlies and the nannies. All about the manlies and the nannies. All about the manlies. Don't make him give on a bogus argument about when the time come and when you're ready to come over and all of that. Oh no. I don't know a smell of weird pounder. They're going to trickle now. They're going to trickle now. I'm going to bring him over to Westmoreland. I'm going to make him a vote. I'm going to promise him things. And when the vote done, I'm going to now go see him because that is how them operate. I'm his rise united. I'm his other PMP. No PMP in operate, sir. PMP MP deal straight. PMP candidates deal straight. Them they rise united. 14.7% of them. Them are little bit of people. Them not in charge of Uno. Uno are part of the 85.3%. So I take a chat from him. Don't make ENS have una turn ba um, buffoons. Don't make ENS turn no, no idiot. In Mekono left on a yard in Western Hanover. On the yard in central Westmoreland and bringing over to Western Westmoreland to commit a crime by transferring your vote to a place that you don't live. And that's him do, you know. That's what him do. And if you get reported to the electoral office, you're going to lose the votes and the voters list because you'll commit a crime. But we not tell him. We not tell him no electoral office. We're busy with that. Our oh, business with this Uno as PMP, 85.3% of the PMP group. Uno, <laughs> Uno need to make him pay. In addition to make him pay, when that day come, Uno show up as authentic PMP and send him back over Western and over. You hear me? The 60 groups are here and here's farm. I expect the resistance leaders in Western Westmoreland and Central Westmoreland are going to send out this information. Let them know. We'll cut this part of the live or we'll send it out so they can get it. We we'll have a greater responsibility to take Ian Hill's money and, and operators. Yes, Papa? Yeah? On the veranda. And do that. Make him go no dollars. And then when the day come to vote him, vote him ass out. Vote him ass out. Don't vote for him. Him not deserving a vote. He must part of that team that undermined the PMP for us to lose Central Westmoreland and Western Westmoreland. He must part of that team was paying people money to undermine Dwayne Vaz and Wicca McNeil. He must part of that. Walking around with the Bible in him and I walk around with God Bible that twist up God's word. God will strike him while him there, you see? He must part of that crew. So the do not. Do not take him lightly. Take him money. Go to the center where they have a vote and vote him out. Vote for the authentic PMP man. Uma Golden say, must fuck off. Yes, sorry, somebody never have a tape of that. Mark Golden, the leader for the Rise United, I tell PMP councillors, so them for fuck off. I'm soon going to look for you. Know. I'm going to get where I look for him and Ian Hills. All I'm going to get where I look for. So I'm saying to you, the 60 groups, you hear me? Don't take a chat from Ian Hills. Vote him out. Take him money. Collect a weekly pay. Because you're not wait. And all of that. Let's mosey on down to not. 
Trelawney, look a bit. We kind of deal with Annette case already, don't know Trelawney. But we want to just reiterate. Come here, some of the meadows are run. Um, I went to um, Anika every, every month, I have a, a big motorcade that people that drive through the place. Um, spend money for a motorcade. The PMP delegates are not Trelawney. <laughs> I'll be down in North Trelawney by right before the week end. The PMP voters in North Trelawney. But don't forget, don't know about the PA and it park, park, parchment, no mind, you know. Because and it parchment can't get the PMP voters them for come out, come vote for nothing. And it parchment can't even get her neighbors them for come vote. So you know she'll get PMP people them for vote. On the run with Dennis, Dennis Meadows, run him where? If it's a labor right or a criminal, run him where? We can't have the people that represent PMP good, good constituency. So the PMP delegates say me are telling them to pull up on the socks. Pull up on the socks, man. Stop walk up and down with him. What do I want to do on a motorcade? What wrong with you know? Now if it's a money thing, then by all means I work on our work. If the motorcade is a work, that's when you get, when you get, when you drink, so you know, when you must yam them out, you know? That man a PMP, when you can yam them out. When you can yam them right out. Take them money, do all kind of things when you don't owe them any obligation at all. None. But I want to reiterate that to the PMP people that I'm in natural army. How can we take PMP good, good seat and give it to a labor right and a criminal? What's the matter with you know? Catch yourself, man. Back it up. But I have a feeling, a very strong feeling. I have a very strong feeling. You know, I have this feeling. I have this feeling because the PMP delegates them and them are run things. The PMP, the authentic PMP them, the 85.3% PMP them when I support Rise United are who are run things. Yeah. The fight still are going on in the Southeast St. Catherine. I gather that has not come to an end yet. You see how the comments are militant and I stand up? I saw one PMP people stand up against Rise United. Against Mark Golden, because I'm not your leader. PMP people, Mark Golden is not your leader. You know, understand that? I'm not your no leader. How do I know that? Because 85.3% of you no know, don't support him. That's why I know that he is not your no leader. 85.3% of you don't support him. They don't want to show you the rest of the pool. Or we matching up against Andrew Wallace. Them never want to show you the rest of the poll. Or when the people are asked the question, which party would you vote for in the next election? Them can't show you that because you already tell them that you don't nah support him. So it's him in there with him 14.7%. Him and Angel and Tony Hilton and Julian Robinson and them little ticky ticky. And Dennis Meadows cannot get no seat in the PMP. Ian Wheels lose PNP seat and will not be the member of parliament for Western Saint, um, Westmoreland. I promise you, Ian Wheels will not be your member of parliament. I promise you, Dennis Meadows will not be your member of parliament. I promise you. But here's the next promise I want to make to you. Silvera, Jylan Silvera and Richard Parchment, will never run an exceed for PNP. You know why? 85.3% 85, 85 of the PNP people, they are not with, oh no, are Rise United. We are PNP. We are the majority. Uno is a minority. Uno not ready. And comrades, tonight we want to talk about the members of parliament. And let me be clear again. Me only talk to PMP members of parliament. Me not talk to them there when it run for the PMP ticket and are now fully Rise United members of parliament. Me I talk to Peter Phillips. Me I talk to Natalie Nita. Me I talk to Denise Joyce. Me I talk to Fitz. I mean, I tell no Fitz Miggle name yet. Me I talk to Lothi and Cousins. I mean, I tell no Fee Miggle name yet either. Me I talk to Dr. Guy. Me I talk to Lisa Hannah. 
Me I talk to my brethren and my friend, who me love very much, Philip Paulwell. What the next two? Me I talk to Mikael Phillips, the son of Dr. Phillips. Which one me missing out? I'm missing out one. A them ten that me I talk to. Rue Graham is the next one. A uno ten me I talk to. Uno have a responsibility to this country and to the People's National Party. And this argument was not spout, but they not going to remove Mark for obvious reasons. It's not a good argument. And I know how to feel about it. Because Mark Golding and Peter Bunting tried it with Peter Phillips. And they did vex about it. And they did upset about it. And they never like it. I get it. We get it. We know. That was a different situation. That was a coup. That was an attempted coup. That were criminals and underminers and treach and traitorous people trying to destroy the People's National Party. That was then. No. You have every single evidence that you need to remove that man. Every evidence is there. I will going to outline it to you. I will going to send it to you. The way to get it, trust me. By Thursday, you will have it. Everything that he has done that warrants you removing him. And I have a feeling that the reluctance also has something to do with P.J. Patterson. And I really don't want to beat up P.J. no more. Come here, mother dies like a tete-a-tete -tete at Leslie and thing two or three months, two months ago. And we kind of half make up a little bit. But P.J. is doing this purely for power. And when P.J. tell me that you shouldn't remove Mark because it will mash up the party, it mash up already. Mark mash it up. Mark mash it up. Everything that has happened to the People's National Party for the last two and a half years, Mark is the central part of it. Mark is it. Everything. Our loss in the pools, our sliding in the pools, our loss of confidence by the Jamaican people in us as an opposition, the lack of our party people them, um, um, participating in anything that we do, the lack of interest in our party, everything. Mark Golden is the central focus of it. It is the reason for it. Andrew Ollis lost 13 points. Him no get none. People up in arms against Andrew Ollis. Them no no not with him. Teachers are demonstrate for I am for more money. The, him go down there. Them are asking where I go. Them no no not with him. Nobody. 85 percent. Listen to me, members of parliament. 85.3% of the PNP people not supportive of this man. This man that has done some destructive thing to the People's National Party. I will provide the evidence for you. I must remove him. Don't bother that fool fool argument about election soon call. It mash up already. An election call, we will do better. Him no want, him, him no want to, him no want to lead a government. He want to lead the opposition. He want to have control of the PMP, Iman Bunting and Angela. Them the mind because them Ima MP and Angela MP and them a try find a seat for Bunting and anywhere him go, we go stone him. Peter Bunting can't ever represent the People's National Party again as long as I breathe. I take that as my personal responsibility from Almighty God Himself to make sure that him. Don't have him near man any ballot beside the head. But him going to represent PMP. If not, if him, if Angela so busy trying to find a seat for, for him, she didn't go check about fear I won. And that she forgot do. Go check for fear I won. Them don't want to no government. Them don't want the PMP to win. They want the PMP to stay in govern in, in opposition. They want to find seat for all of them people who never have no seat. And them think that them can wear Uno down, Uno members of parliament. They want to replace all of Uno. 
They want to find seats to put their people in. And they believe that as long as they're in opposition, them can ride it out and them can wear Uno down. They will wear it down until they say Uno now run back and then them push one next man in their seat. And you now run back. That's why Dr. Guy needs to stay in his seat. And take back that foolishness about him now run back. Or find somebody from thinking him now will make it. But not that fool. Oh man, you well. Not that fool. Every one of them participated in the destruction of the People's National Party. And they continue to do it. And Mark Golden is presiding over it. Don't be PJ telling you nothing. It mash up already. Flat, flat, flat. Look who no have the chairman of the People's National Party. Look. After we have a Dudley Thompson, PJ Patterson, Bobby Pickers, who was chairman of the party. Look who no have the chairman of the party. Take a, take a good look. In their wielding power. In their wielding power. And deciding who get what seat. One must understand the game. And none of them not understand the game. That thing that we wrote about P for Powell, about the appeasement, appeasement, we're appeasing these people. We're appeasing Mark for what? For some um, um, dumb idealistic idea that you shouldn't remove a party leader before him face the elections. This is an extraordinary circumstance. And the idea about not doing that is not only idealistic, it's dangerous. Dangerous to the survival of this movement. And it's like we don't get it. It's like we don't look from Mark with him 14.7% and see that 85.3% of the PNP not supporting him. And him there with him one up man, she put out with him a veto power, a special power. And creating all kind of nonsense. And Angela in there run things. A date now she a run things, she a run one part, him a run one part, the tent bun down, everybody take a piece of the tent with a piece of stick and catch it up somewhere with fit them and them people. Except that the PNP people not with them. The PNP people out here with us. 85.3% of them. What it better take for you to understand that you need to remove this man. Well, what do you want to do? Spell out for like. No, no, never go basic school, that's right. Maybe no, 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 basic school, but me go basic school. So I'm telling you. Them going to wear on the down. Mark Golden and Peter Bunting plan is to wear on the down. Wear on the down until on the run back. And they will stay in opposition and keep the 14.7% for as long as it takes. I want to sit down and listen to PJ about doing. Um, put everybody challenge him. We want somebody to make an application going forward in July to make an application for president of the People's National Party. We need somebody to do that. Put in an application for president of the People's National Party and make, make the 85.3% of the PNP people them get up and walk behind whoever that is. As members of parliament, 83,000 people elect all of you. 464,000 Jamaicans voted for the People's National Party in 2011. That's basically our base support, you know. Yeah? A 2.9 million people uh, population. I mean, how much, how much, how much the voters list again? I think is a million plus. Michelle? Here's the damn glasses. Michelle, can you tell me how much people are on the voters list? I'm not going to say how much 14.7% of that is. The last time we checked it, I think that's about 200 people. Two thousand, um, that's about um, 2,000 people. 2 million people on the voters list. 14.7 from 2 million people. That's about 200 people. Or 2,000 people. How much people are that? 2 million people on the voters list. Two million. Two million people. 14.7 from two million. 
But I'm not to bring them there. 14.7, 294,000 people. Thank you, Anika. Two million people on the voters list. Let me just repeat it back for in context. Mark Golden have 14.7% of the voting public. 85.3% of the PMP voting public now support him, now vote for him. They will never vote for him. I'm going to take my word for that. They will not vote for him. 294,000 people. That's what he have. 14.7. That can't win election. Because even that the lowest turnout. That can't win election. So what Mark Golden need to do is take him 14.7. Go farm him own party because that was their intent. Farm their own party. Go get an own candidates. Go start an own thing. Come out of PMP headquarters. No go away, come out. I hear today and roll up road. Pack up on the jing bang, sit in the man. Come out. A normal man, the party. Within the 14.7%. And go farm on the thing. Get food on the people them. Go run on the election. And leave we alone with the 85.3%. That could build back a party. So members of parliament. That argument that you have up not holding any water. It's a lame argument, very lame argument. And you're not thinking about the people who voted for us. You are thinking about your own damn self alone, thinking individually about yourself. And, but even so, a matter of fact, if you look at it, even so, you're not thinking about yourself because on the very survival depends on this. But you don't even see that. You don't even see that. Them who are East Kingston, them who are East Kingston, about the East Kingston, about the them, them listen up. Them who are East King, so them who are fit seat, them who are Natalie seat. They are there, them are run poor, they are you, Graham, them put in Denny's name. Like, what I'm doing? Now? What will it take for you to see that this is their intention and what they intend to do? Why are we listening to other people? Huh? Hitler started planning the war, World War II from 1926. That's when them started planning World War II, the Nazi party. And when Hitler was elected Chancellor of Germany, nobody, no peer attention. Nobody. Everybody said, all right, uh, we're good. Um, he can't do nothing. My Chancellor. Uh. And then when him get them to merge chancellorship and presidentship, which give him control of the army, then dismiss him still. Could I follow? What if you follow him? As chancellor, him don't have control of the army. He have control of the government. Is the head of state, the president, have control of the army. So him and him crew put together a little plan and get them to change it and merge the two things together. And that gave him ultimate power. And even then, the world said, uh, uh, I don't know that. Make him go on. Uh, I do a thing. I do him thing. Nothing like that. Even then. And them, con them continue to appease him, appease him, and appease him, and appease him. And finally, him turn it up on them and start a war. And it took them, took at least, took Americans at least three years of that war before them actually wake up to the fact that they better get involved. Appeasement. It's not Paul alone. Uno do alone. Or ten alone matter. Well, take out Philip Peter Phillips out of it. Uno in there appease this man. This man who came from absolutely nowhere, has no PMP roots, vote for the JLP every election, have no intention to build a PMP or unite a PMP, have no intention to follow the constitution of the PMP, have no intention to put in place plans to win an election, have no intentions to win an election. Out of nowhere, the PMP delegates were duped into believing that this man is a PMP. They were duped into believing that this man is a leader who has never even led a Dalio's group, you know, play Dalio's and him are the father, I'm never be the father yet. No, me says, I'm friend and company to them. 
we have the, 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 the honor of talking to private sector people all the time. And as I said, is that we call them because we don't know them. God forbid we don't have the other people in number. Some breed of people that call whenever a secretary says, Is this Miss Cross? Yes, Karen Cecilia here. Can you hold for Mr. So and so? Or can you hold for Miss So and so? Ratted. They're disappointed. They're not only disappointed in Mark Golden, they are embarrassed by him and they supported him. They were out in their numbers in the newspaper and the news supporting him. Now they are utterly embarrassed by him and supporting the resistance. And you, the members of parliament, sitting down there like you believe that the seat want to sit down, you know. A fool, no. Don't forget, it's the PNP people giving you that seat. I don't have a responsibility to that 85.3%. I don't have a responsibility to them. The responsibility, your responsibility as a member of parliament is to the people who voted for you. And that's the 85% because none of you, the 10 of you, don't represent that 14.7. Who don't represent the 85.3? The I want to sit down there with this man, chatting some foolishness about party or mash up. Which party will live? It mash up already in 10,000 different pieces. It is unrecognizable. Nobody has no respect for us. People laugh at us. People have demonstrate against the government and now nah, call we. That no make me cry. It made me cry. It made me cry. That people protest after protest after protest are all me a listen out for. It's for somebody, anybody that they protest to say, a time for Andrew Wallace to go and give the PMP back that a charge. Me can't hear it. Uno no cry. Me can't hear it. Them now call for Andrew Wallace to go. Them a call for their money. And their money them a call for. Them now call for him to leave. Do you hear anybody that tell him to leave? No, they make them have money, they want them a war for their money. Them no, I am listening for it. When I get the reports, and Princess is in charge of them kind of things, they call me and say, nobody. Nobody. Mark Golden go to one of the protests, and not even there, so him could get somebody to say, Are you for take over now, boss? Are you for take over? Oh, Jesus, man. What's the matter? We don't know. What's the matter? We don't know. <laughs> the leader of your party turn up at a protest where people are fighting for their money. And him turn up. And nobody will say, Dear man, see the man if you take over. Nobody? Not even once, Maddy. Don't say, Yeah, man, I'm now a few times now. Come on, Andrew Wallace. Oh, no. They were talking about their money. Not him. Them talking about their money. They're not about him. They're not busy with him. They're not see him. Them ask where him I go. They move away from him. The 17 people, the resistance, count them. The 17 people move away from him. Him look lost and ridiculous. They have a protest. They have one protest, two protests, three protests, four protests, five protests, excitement. Every minute somebody have protest for something. And nobody now call for Andrew Willis to leave. Nobody now call for the PMP to lead. And Uno sit down there talk about Uno can't remove leader because of? Because of because of what? What? Because PJ telling us it's not gonna be a bad thing. How? How is it going to be a bad thing to remove him? And find ourselves a new opposition leader. And make him take him set him time and come out of and come out of our party. Oh, is that on the thing say if they had the majority that we have now, they would have make on the day that about say it all look bad and them now them will sign up some letter on the whole long, long time, you see? And running away long time. No. On the sit down there, pussy foot with them. I play up with them. I'm tired. I am. But we're going to outline the case against Mark Golden to you. The factual case against Mark Golden. And ask him to remove him. We are going to outline that case to you. I will tell you. Know? I will tell the PMP people them. And the PMP people them. 
the 85.3%. We'll expect that. Is there anything else, Michelle, Anika? That's it? I think that's it? Damn, I look cute and I'm a chap. Uh, uh. People said I'm not voting for true. That's true. People said I'm not voting. Um, read it somewhere. So, comrades, that's it. We talk to the comrades in Naughty St. Elizabeth, and they know what they need to do to run a current Spencer. We spoke to the comrades in South East St. Anne, and they know what to do to re-elect them, them MP. We talk to the people in Western West Milan, particularly those 60 votes at Ian farm up. I would tell them to take Ian e money and ask him for a fortnight pay until them go up to the voting thing, and then they must vote against him or don't show up. And we are confident they're going to do them work. I will call in on Lisa Anna and Damian Crawford to only attend conferences of authentic PMP because it's 85.3% of the PMP that are authentic. The other 14.7 is Mark Golden crew. And um, if we don't got them, nothing for them, we talk about them, we're burning out. We're telling that plain and simple. But now means no words. Because we can't play up with them, man. I want to play play up with them, man. I want to run for run with them, man. I want to have the power to do it. I want to run them way. So that is it. I think we have covered all, uh, all the grounds that we needed to cover. Until then, thank you all very much for joining me tonight. Um, somebody, what is that? Um, Joan? Joan Drummond? I thought you just want to come on. Sure, yeah. Reds, thank you very much. Um, don't look at Joan is, is around. She had wanted to come on to say something. I, I don't see her. Uh, you on? No? All right. Thank you, people, for joining joining me. Um, I hope you had a good time. I did. <laughs> had a whale of a time, actually. So um, see you next time. Um, stay safe. And um, God bless you. Keep the kids safe. God bless you all. Good night. <laughs>